In music, harmony is the use of simultaneous pitches, or chords. The study of harmony involves chords and the construction and chord progressions and the principles of connection that govern them. Harmony is often said to refer to the vertical aspect of music, as distinguished from melodic line, or the horizontal aspect counterpoint, which refers to the interweaving of melodic lines, and polyphony, which refers to the relationship of separate independent voices, are thus sometimes distinguished from harmony. In popular and jazz harmony, chords are named by their root plus various terms and characters indicating their qualities. In many types of music, notably Baroque, Romantic, Modern, and Jazz, chords are often augmented with tensions. A tension is an additional chord member that creates a relatively dissonant interval in relation to the bass. Typically, in the classical common practice period a dissonant chord resolves to a consonant chord. Harmonization usually sounds pleasant to the ear when there is a balance between the consonant and dissonant sounds. In simple words, that occurs when there is a balance between tense and relaxed moments. Etymology and definitions. The term harmony derives from the Greek rho mu o micron mu iota alpha, meaning joint, agreement, concord, from the verb rho mu o micron zeta omega, to fit together, to join. The term was often used for the whole field of music, while music referred to the arts in general. In ancient Greece, the term defined the combination of contrasted elements, a higher and lower note. Nevertheless, it is unclear whether the simultaneous sounding of notes was part of ancient Greek musical practice. Harmonia may have merely provided a system of classification of the relationships between different pitches. In the Middle Ages the term was used to describe two pitches sounding in combination, and in the Renaissance the concept was expanded to denote three pitches sounding together. Aristoxenus wrote a work entitled Harmonica Stoicaea, which is thought the first work in European history written on the subject of harmony. It was not until the publication of Ramos' Traité de Harmonie in 1722 that any text discussing musical practice made use of the term in the title. Though that work is not the earliest record of theoretical discussion of the topic, the underlying principle behind these texts is that harmony sanctions harmoniousness by conforming to certain pre-established compositional principles. Current dictionary definitions, while attempting to give concise descriptions, often highlight the ambiguity of the term in modern use. Ambiguities tend to arise from either aesthetic considerations or from the point of view of musical texture and contrapuntal. In the words of Arnold Whittle, while the entire history of music theory appears to depend on just such a distinction between harmony and counterpoint, it is no less evident that developments in the nature of musical composition down the centuries have presumed the interdependence, at times amounting to integration, at other times a source of sustained tension between the vertical and horizontal dimensions of musical space. The view that modern tonal harmony in Western music began in about 1600 is commonplace in music theory. This is usually accounted for by the replacement of horizontal writing common in the music of the Renaissance, with a new emphasis on the vertical element of composed music. Modern theorists, however, tend to see this as an unsatisfactory generalization. As Karl Dahlhaus puts it, it was not that counterpoint was supplanted by harmony but that an older type both of counterpoint and a vertical technique was succeeded by a newer type, and harmony comprises not only the structure of chords but also their movement. Like music as a whole, harmony is a process. Descriptions and definitions of harmony and harmonic practice may show bias towards European musical traditions. For example, South Asian art music is frequently cited as placing little emphasis on what is perceived in Western practice as conventional harmony. The underlying harmonic foundation for most South Asian music is the drone, a held open fifth that does not alter in pitch throughout the course of a composition. 
pitch simultaneity in particular is rarely a major consideration. Nevertheless, many other considerations of pitch are relevant to the music, its theory and its structure, such as the complex system of ragus which combines both melodic and modal considerations and codifications within it. So, intricate pitches combinations that sound simultaneously do occur in Indian classical music, but they are rarely studied as teleological harmonic or contrapuntal progressions, as with notated Western music. This contrasting emphasis manifests itself in the different methods of performance adopted. In Indian music improvisation takes a major role in the structural framework of a piece, whereas in Western music improvisation has been uncommon since the end of the 19th century. Where it does occur in Western music, the improvisation either embellishes pre-notated music or draws from musical models previously established in notated compositions, and therefore use familiar harmonic schemes. Nevertheless, emphasis on the pre-composed in European art music the written theory surrounding it shows considerable cultural bias. The Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians identifies this clearly. In Western culture the musics that are most dependent on improvisation, such as jazz, have traditionally been regarded as inferior to art music, in which pre-composition is considered paramount. The conception of musics that live in oral traditions as something composed with the use of improvisatory techniques separates them from the higher standing works that use notation. Yet the evolution of harmonic practice and language itself, in Western art music, is and was facilitated by this process of prior composition remained unchanged regardless of the nature of the performance. Historical Rules Some traditions of Western music performance, composition, and theory have specific rules of harmony. These rules are often described as based on natural properties such as Pythagorean tunings law whole number ratios or harmonics and resonances, with the allowable pitches and harmonies gaining their beauty or simplicity from their closeness to those properties. This model provides that the minor 7th and 9th are not dissonant, while Pythagorean ratios can provide a rough approximation of perceptual harmonicity, they cannot account for cultural factors. Early Western religious music often features parallel perfect intervals. These intervals would preserve the clarity of the original plain song. These works were created and performed in cathedrals, and made use of the resonant modes of their respective cathedrals to create harmonies. As polyphony developed, however, the use of parallel intervals was slowly replaced by the English style of consonants that used thirds and sixths. The English style was considered to have a sweeter sound, and was better suited to polyphony in that it offered greater linear flexibility in part writing. Early music also forbade usage of the tritone, due to its dissonance, and composers often went to considerable lengths, by a musica ficta, to avoid using it. In the newer triadic harmonic system, however, the tritone became permissible, as the standardization of functional dissonance made its use in dominant chords desirable. Most harmony comes from two or more notes sounding simultaneously, but a work can imply harmony with only one melodic line by using arpeggios or hocket. Many pieces from the Baroque period for solo string instruments, such as Bach's sonatas and partitas for solo violin and cello, convey subtle harmony, through inference rather than full chordal structures. These works create a sense of harmonies by using arpeggiated chords and implied bass lines. The implied bass lines are created with low notes of short duration that many listeners perceive as being the bass note of a chord. Types Carl Dahlhaus distinguishes between coordinate and subordinate harmony. Subordinate harmony is the hierarchical tonality or tonal harmony well known today. Coordinate harmony is the older medieval and renaissance tonalité ancienne. The term is meant to signify that sonorities are linked one after the other without giving rise to the impression of a goal-directed development. A first chord forms a progression, with a second chord, and a second with a third. 
but the former chord progression is independent of the later one and vice versa. Coordinate harmony follows direct relationships rather than indirect as in subordinate. Interval cycles create symmetrical harmonies, which have been extensively used by the composers Oldenburg, George Pearl, Arnold Schoenberg, B. Acute L. A. Bartok, and Edgard Vares's Density 21.5. Close harmony and open harmony use close position and open position chords, respectively. C. Voicing and close and open harmony. Other types of harmony are based upon the intervals of the chords used in that harmony. Most chords in Western music are based on tertian harmony or chords built with the interval of thirds. In the chord C major 7, C is a major third, e.g. is a minor third, and G to B is a major third. Other types of harmony consist of quartal harmony and quintal harmony. A unison is considered a harmonic interval, just like a fifth or a third, but is unique in that it is two identical notes produced together. Many people harmony must involve intervals like thirds, fifths, and sevenths, but unison counts as harmony and is important, especially in orchestration. In pop music, unison singing is usually called doubling, a technique the Beatles used in many of their earlier recordings. As a type of harmony, singing in unison or playing the same notes, often using different musical instruments, at the same time is commonly called monophonic harmonization. Intervals An interval is the relationship between two separate musical pitches. For example, in the melody Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the first two notes and the second two notes are at the interval of one-fifth. What this means is that if the first two notes were the pitch C, the second two notes would be the pitch G, four scale notes, or seven chromatic notes, above it. The following are common intervals. Therefore, the combination of notes with their specific intervals, a chord, creates harmony. For example, in a C chord, there are three notes, C, E, and G. The note C is the root. The note C and G provide harmony, and in a G7 chord, the root G with each subsequent note provide the harmony. In the musical scale, there are 12 pitches. Each pitch is referred to as a degree of the scale. The names A, B, C, D, E, F, and G are insignificant. The intervals, however, are not. Here is an example. As can be seen, no note always corresponds to a certain degree of the scale. The tonic, or first degree note, can be any of the 12 notes of the chromatic scale. All the other notes fall into place. For example, when C is the tonic, the fourth degree or subdominant is F. When D is the tonic, the fourth degree is G. While the note names remain constant, they may refer to different scale degrees, implying different intervals with respect to the tonic. The great power of this fact is that any musical work can be played or sung in any key. It is the same piece of music, as long as the intervals are the same, thus transposing the melody into the corresponding key. When the intervals surpass the perfect octave, these intervals are called compound intervals, which include particularly the 9th, 11th, and 13th intervals, widely used in jazz and blues music. Compound intervals are formed and named as follows. Second plus octave equals ninth. Third plus octave equals tenth. Fourth plus octave equals eleventh. Fifth plus octave equals twelfth. Sixth plus octave equals thirteenth. Seventh plus octave equals fourteenth. The reason the two numbers don't add correctly is that one note is counted twice. Apart from this categorization, intervals can also be divided into consonant and dissonant. As explained in the following paragraphs, consonant intervals produce a sensation of relaxation and dissonant intervals a sensation of tension. In tonal music, the term consonant also means brings resolution. The consonant intervals are considered the perfect unison, octave, fifth, fourth and major, and minor third and sixth, and their compound forms. An interval is referred to as perfect when the harmonic relationship is found in the natural overtone series.
The other basic intervals are called imperfect because the harmonic relationships are not found mathematically exact in the overtone series. In classical music the perfect fourth above the bass may be considered dissonant when its function is contrapuntal. Other intervals, the second and the seventh are considered dissonant and require resolution and usually preparation. Note that the effect of dissonance is perceived relatively within musical context. For example, a major seventh interval alone may be perceived as dissonant. But the same interval as part of a major seventh chord may sound relatively consonant. A tritone sounds very dissonant alone, but less so within the context of a dominant seventh chord. Chords and tension. In the Western tradition, in music after the 17th century, harmony is manipulated using chords, which are combinations of pitch classes. Intertion harmony, so named after the interval of a third, the members of chords are found and named by stacking intervals of the third, starting with the root, then the third above the root, and the fifth above the root, etc. Dyads, the simplest chords, contain only two members. A chord with three members is called a triad because it has three members, not because it is necessarily built in thirds. Depending on the size of the intervals being stacked, different qualities of chords are formed. In popular and jazz harmony, chords are named by their root plus various terms and characters indicating their qualities. To keep the nomenclature as simple as possible, some defaults are accepted. For example, the chord members C, E, and G form a C major triad, called by default simply a C chord. In an A-flat chord, the members are A-flat, C, and E-flat. In many types of music, notably Baroque, Romantic, Modern and Jazz, chords are often augmented with tensions. A tension is an additional chord member that creates a relatively dissonant interval in relation to the bass. Following the tertian practice of building chords by stacking thirds, the simplest first tension is added to a triad by stacking on top of the existing root, third, and fifth, another third above the fifth, giving a new, potentially dissonant member the interval of a seventh away from the root and therefore called the seventh of the chord and producing a four-note chord, called a seventh chord. Depending on the widths of the individual thirds stacked to build the chord, the interval between the root and the seventh of the chord may be major, minor, or diminished. The nomenclature allows that, by default, C7 indicates a chord with a root, third, fifth, and seventh spelled C, E, G, and B flat. Other types of seventh chords must be named more explicitly, such as C major 7, C augmented 7, etc. Continuing to stack thirds on top of a seventh chord produces extensions, and brings in the extended tensions, or upper tensions, the ninths, elevenths, and thirteenths. This creates the chords named after them. Extensions beyond the 13th reproduce existing chord members and are left out of the nomenclature. Complex harmonies based on extended chords are found in abundance in jazz, late romantic music, modern orchestral works, film music, etc. Typically, in the classical common practice period a dissonant chord resolves to a consonant chord. Harmonization usually sounds pleasant to the ear when there is a balance between the consonant and dissonant sounds. In simple words, that occurs when there is a balance between tense and relaxed moments. For this reason, usually tension is prepared and then resolved. Preparing tension means to place a series of consonant chords that lead smoothly to the dissonant chord. In this way the composer ensures introducing tension smoothly, without disturbing the listener. Once the piece reaches its subclimax, the listener needs a moment of relaxation to clear up the tension, which is obtained by playing a consonant chord that resolves the tension of the previous chords. The clearing of this tension usually sounds pleasant to the listener, though this is not always the case in late 19th century music such as Tristan und Isolde by Richard Wagner.